What's going on guys? GeoSnow right here. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to use Prometheus in order to initiate a downgrade using the SHSH2 blobs that you have saved. And I'm going to show you how to go back from iOS 10.3 or 10.2.1 to 10.2 or 10.1.1, depending on for which you have the blobs saved. Well, before we start, it's very important to do so. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do it right now, because this is very important. I post videos related to downgrades pretty often as they unfold. And if you received a notification about a video after it got patched by Apple, there would be no point. So. When you're subscribing, go ahead, click in there, but also make sure you press that li little bell. It's something uh, about the YouTube lately that you need to press send me all notifications and click save. And so you're going to be able to receive all the information about this. Also, be sure to check out the iPhone software downgrade playlist that I'm going to have in the description, in which I, I also have tutorials on how to fix Prometheus errors because they might appear as Prometheus is in beta and how to save the blobs and so on, dual boot and things related. Now, before we start, you should know that you have to have the uh, SHSH2 blobs. And before I get a lot of hate to this video, from those of you who do not know what work in progress means, according to TeamStar, this might or might not work for all devices. So keep that in mind. It may work for you or it may not. It's something you can try, but it has been working for a lot of people. And according to TeamStar, the creator of this, his Twitter is in the description, um, a lot of people got success on restoring using the blob. Well, what do you need to do? At first, you need to get your blob. In my case, it's going to be this one. And in my case, I'm going to, um, to actually uh, downgrade an iPod Touch. Uh, so this is not the correct blob. Let me try to move it in here. There we go. This is the correct blob that I'm going to be using. So this one in here, I need to check it first. So it's going to be a blob for iOS 10.2. Make sure the blob that you have is actually compatible to the device that you own. Now, depending on the device that you, you own, you might need to use different basebands and SIP. Uh, I'm going to get into that in a couple of seconds. First thing you need to do, go ahead here on tsssaver.onecanon.com slash check.php, the link is going to be in the description, to verify if the blob that you have saved is actually valid. In one of my previous videos in the, uh, in the iPhone software downgrade playlist, I have shown you how to verify them. But I'm going to show you that again, you choose the blob, that is going to be in here. So you're going to get the uh, appropriate blob for, for that matter. And I'm going to put it in uh, future restore in here. It's going to be this one. And select the uh, device that we have. In my case, it's going to be an iPod, but it's the same procedure. And the version. Check that thing and you're going to click submit. As you can see, it says in here that the file is valid. It's working for erase and it's 14C92. Great, we can start doing our things now. Well, in order to do that, you need to download two different IPSWs, the one to which you want to downgrade and the one that is the latest, or at least something that is signed. So, in my case, I have iOS 10.2.1. iOS 10.2.1 has less chances to get um, a uh, nonce collision, so keep that in mind. If you can, go ahead to iOS 10.3, or if you're on iOS 10.3 beta 1, stay there, download the beta for that, because you can still find the betas on the iPhone wiki, link is in the description, and uh, download the appropriate one. But in my case, I have downloaded already iOS 10.2.1, so I'm going to try my luck with it, as it's still signed. What you need to do is to take the IPSW, right click and rename it. Um, please do not ask me for Windows tutorials because there is no Windows version of Future Restore. As you can see, Teamstar only made Linux and Mac OS. So I cannot do a Windows tutorial. Make it a zip file like this and extract it. Depending on your computer, it might take a while. I'm not using an SSD, so it's going to take a little bit to extract. I'm gonna be back. So the file has been extracted. Now, depending on what kind of device you're using, you're going to need different files from this. I'm using an iPod Touch, so I will not have a baseband because there is no baseband in it. And some iPads as well are not going to have a baseband, but the iPads that do have a cellular connection and you can put a SIM card in them, is going to have a baseband. So what you need from here is going to be the build manifest. 
you're going to extract the build manifest, put it in here, and then if you have a, um, a, ba a basement, you're going to go and take the basement, but I do not have one in here. I'm going to make a table on my website with the files you need to get according to different devices. And that's pretty much what you need to take from here. Of course, if your device does have a SEP, uh, which is the uh, fingerprint, sensor and the uh, the CPU that actually gets the information from the fingerprint uh, sensor, you're going to also take that. The SEP is located in firmware, all flash, and it's going to be in all flash and the production number of your device. Some IPSWs will have different folders in here. We have more than one folder for different N numbers in here. You need to check for your own uh, number and in order to get the number of your device, you can install an application. I'm going to have it in the description down below that is going to tell you what kind of device you have. So you know from which folder you are going to get the info. Now, the SEP firmware is in this uh, folder. It's called SEP firmware uh, dot your board number and release dot em4p. You need to get this one and not the plist file because the plist file contains only information about the uh, firmware itself. And that's pretty much it. As I say, due to the fact that this is a Wi-Fi device, I'm not going to take the basement because there is no basement. But if you do have one, you need to take the basement. So um, what are you going to do next? You're going to put these files in here. Let me do that, okay, and we're going to proceed to future restore. Make sure you have the IPSW for iOS 10.2 or whatever firmware you want to downgrade to in here and start a new terminal window. So um, it's going to be pretty damn easy in this case. You're going to simply get the uh, future restore macOS and put it in here. Then the command, let me, let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see. Right, the command is going to be the uh, dash t in order to get the blob. If you have multiple blobs, you're going to use multiple dash t file um, alternations, but in my case, I have only one blob. Of course, if you have more of them, it uh, increases the chance to get this working because you have more um, collisions to, be, to work with. And um, then I'm going to insert the, the next file, which is uh, in this case, basement, but we do not have a basement. In your case, it's going to be uh, dash b and the file, the basement file, but in my case, I do not have one, so I'm going to write double dash, no basement, which means that the device, it's a Wi-Fi device, it doesn't have a basement, being it an iPad or an iPod. The next thing you need to do is to insert the SEP, which is uh, dash s, and you're going to take the SEP firmware in here. The SEP doesn't apply for 32-bit devices. For 32-bit devices, there is a special command dash dash 32-bit that uh, excludes the SEP. The next thing you need to do is to load with um, p the uh, build manifest from here, then load it again with uh, m. You need it twice for the SEP and for the other files. And uh, then you need to get the, um, the device to actually reboot every time the collision doesn't happen. So to do that, you write uh, dash W. If you do not put dash W, the device will only restart once, will assume the fact that the uh, nonce generated is the correct one, and of course will fail should that happen not to be the correct nonce. So you write double dash and then, sorry, uh, dash W, and then you need to take the um, IPSW for iOS 10.2, put it in here and hit the enter key. As you can see, it's going to do this. You're going to wait a couple of seconds and it's going to basically restart the device. Now, uh, starting from this point, your device needs to generate this nonce in here. As you can see, this is the one that you have in the blob file, the one saved. And your device will simply start rebooting one, um, one time, then second time, then fourth time, and so on, over and over again. Apple logo, recovery, Apple logo, recovery. This is going to do uh, forever, uh, until it gets the correct nonce. Now, your device can get the correct nonce or can't, depending on the device, depending on the firmware version, if it generates collisions. It's simply like the lottery in here. You don't know if it's going to generate the correct one so this is unfortunate unfortunate because we never know if it's going to work for sure or not it's an attack you are attacking the device into generating various nonces until one of the nonces will match this that you have in the blob unfortunately you cannot change the one that it's already saved in the blob so what you can do is to leave the uh, terminal running 
in this place and wait for the device to generate a collision. A collision means that the blob generated, sorry, the nonce generated by the device is uh, identical to the one generated inside the blob. Uh, this is possible, this has happened to a lot of people and they managed to actually downgrade their device and this is the Prometheus method. I'm going to leave this device to do its job because this is actually what we can do. Uh, at this point, when the device is generating the correct one, it will stop restarting and you will get it automatically into the um, into the restore mode. It will restore and will start normally into the hello screen after it uh, completes the, uh, the restore. But as I said, you do not have anything to do up until this point, but to leave the device to do its job in here. If you're getting any errors and you're not getting to this screen with these numbers in here, you probably need misunderstood the commands or inserted the wrong files or something related. If you did that, please review the video again and make sure you have all the commands in place and also you can check out the playlist in which I have all the fixes. Uh, for example, if you're getting segmentation fault or um, libzip is missing, in that case you need to install libzip and so on. But if you have any questions or if your device is providing some strange errors and so on, you can uh, ask me on Twitter or you can ask me in the comment section down below. Now, I'm not going to let this device to do this for the whole day because I simply do not want to do so, but I'm going to close the terminal. And if you do that, unfortunately, if you decide, okay, I'm not going to do this, I don't want the device to, to do it because for some reason it doesn't generate a collision. Your device will be stuck in recovery mode and it's going to show you the iTunes logo and the power cable and it's not going to boot. If you reboot it, it's not going to boot. How you fix that? Well, there's an application that I'm going to show you. Uh, I have it somewhere in here on the launchpad called Recboot. You're going to download Recboot. It's available for Windows, Linux and um, OS X and you click Exit Recovery. When you click this, it will restart the device from recovery mode directly into its normal mode. So if you want to abort this procedure, you can fix the uh, recovery mode with that and the device has now started completely. This is actually the method. I'm going to put it in the um, wait for it a couple of hours to see if it generates the collision and manage to restore and if it does I'm going to post the screenshots on Twitter. So yeah this is actually it guys I'm, I'm pretty sorry this doesn't work for everybody and it's not something everybody can try but this is the nature of Prometheus and because it's using a bug that attacks the uh, nonce generator it's pretty damn hard without a jailbreak. If you have a jailbreak you can set nonce enabler to the nonce that you already have in the file and you're set but if you don't have a jailbreak, you can just try this. As I said, uh, it can take an hour, it can, it can take a few minutes, it can take a whole day, depends on the device. So leave it for, let's say, a few hours and if it doesn't generate the nonce, it's safe to assume you should give up because it doesn't generate collisions. You can learn more about collisions on Teamstar's profile on Twitter, he tweets about this pretty often and uh, he is actually the creator behind the Prometheus method, I'm not the creator so please do not ask for advanced support about the code from me because I'm not the creator of the tool and I can provide the support but only to some extent. This is actually it guys, till the next time, do not forget, subscribe to stay updated, I'm Geosnow, if you have questions, put them in the comment section down below, and tell me in the comment section down below if you managed to restore your device, and peace out.